we're taking a look at the youth mental health crisis, but we need to go back first. In the 10 years leading up to the COVID pandemic, the CDC reports feelings of sadness and hopelessness went up by 40% for young people. And then fall 2021, leading pediatric groups declared a national emergency for children and their mental health. So come today, roughly 16 months since that declaration, we wanted to know, are things getting better or worse? We went to a local psychiatrist for perspective. Things haven't improved, unfortunately. Not what anyone hopes to hear from a mental health professional. It definitely feels like it, it's getting worse. Psychiatrist Dr. Elsie Ohms of Palm Beach Children's Hospital sees and treats as many as 15 kids a day. It's been a combination of increased awareness. That is a good thing that people are now starting to pay more attention to these issues. But sadly, there is increased stress. What are the big stress points now? So now what we're seeing is children coming in with poor coping styles. They're either coping with direct or indirect self-harm. Is inflation a part of children and their mental health stress right now? Very much so. So children um, need to have a sense of security. So when they see their families and their parents struggling uh, to meet their basic needs, they perceive that. Dr. Ohm says, parents, we have to turn those perceptions into family discussions. For the good of their mental health, check in with children often and be thoughtful about it. What does that look like? What does that sound like? So we, we a lot of times ask, how was your day? And we get short answers, you know. We have to ask a little more. Can you tell me, um, you know, what kind of things happened? Did you find anything funny, stressful? And if you do that on a consistent basis, the barriers will reduce. They'll start being more expressive. And I also asked Dr. Ohms, you know, what stands out to her the most right now with children and their mental health? She tells me it's how many children are still not talking about the thoughts to harm themselves. Making those family discussions, she talked about those regular check-ins with kids, you know, something as simple as how's it going, what's new at school, what's stressing you out right now, those check-ins are all the more important. You know what I think though, it's so true that children really are a microcosm. They are the environment in which they come. So the parents are stressed, your household is stressed, it's all trickling down to them. And I think one of the things, that, especially speaking for myself, parents were so guilty of not asking those open-ended questions. I know. Yes. I was just thinking that the best way to engage is ask open-ended questions and try to get information out of them. And, and not in a prying way, but in a conversational, you know, friendly way. Absolutely. Yeah, and don't let it stop at just, you know, how was your day? Fine. You know, she said you really <laughs> got to press for more. Let right. Keep going. Yes. Keep going, especially those teen years. Yeah, I want you to know, too, I'm working on a follow-up story to this. There are a lot of free resources within public schools. And, and we went to one local high school where they're getting it all right as far as supporting kids, staff, students, everyone in their school communities. I'll bring you that story soon.